Now that I have some perchloric acid, let's go ahead and make some hexamine diperchlorate, otherwise known as HDP. HDP is known as a light energetic and an oxidizer. It can be made several ways with hot water, isopropyl alcohol, and in situ using hydrochloric acid. In this way, what it means by in situ is that we do not need to make the perchloric acid first. In this video, I'm going to be using isopropyl alcohol, IPA, and the perchloric acid. And what we'll be doing is neutralizing a solution of hexamine. The solution will be hexamine and isopropyl alcohol with the perchloric acid that's been made. The materials we need are isopropyl alcohol, it's 99%, 76 milliliters, hexamine, 9 grams, water, 11 milliliters, and the perchloric acid of 68% that we made of 5.2 milliliters. The reaction is as follows. This is hexamine, CH2, 6, and 4, and we're going to add to that two perchloric acids. What we'll end up with is the hexamine, CH2, 6, and 4, but bonded to it will be two perchlorates. The hydrogen will be released, and it's also exothermic, so we produce some heat. And this is how we're going to make it in our methods. We're going to start with a beaker with 76 milliliters of the isopropyl alcohol. We're going to add 9 grams of hexamine to that and the 11 milliliters of water to that. And we're going to do that really with no heat, but start to mixing it. Then we're going to add the heat and heat it to 40 degrees Celsius. And that's why the 11 milliliters of water are really added because we're going to lose solution when this happens. So that way we'll end up not losing as much. And we do this until the hexamine dissolves. At that point, I'm going to filter this if necessary. Of course, we'll keep the solution here. We'll put it back on a stir plate and stir it while we're adding the 5.2 milliliters of perchloric acid. And again, it is exothermic so we are going to produce some heat so we're going to chill it i'll probably put it in a fridge i've seen it actually done in uh, uh, ice water but either way we're going to chill it get it down to five to ten degrees celsius and at that point we should have all of our hdb already formed mixed in solution here we're going to filter it with uh, vacuum filtration right here and once that's done i'm going to use acetone because it does not dissolve in acetone especially cold acetone to wash the hdp then dump it out and because it's an energetic, we're just going to wait until it air dries. Not a lot of information out there on this uh, process or on testing it. So I'm going to do a couple of things. I like plan on testing it with flame, compression, i.e. hitting it with a hammer, and confining it uh, and see if anything happens with either or any of these. This is a pretty straightforward and short process here, so let's go ahead and start it. 76 milliliters of 99% isopropyl alcohol pre-measured. 11 milliliters of distilled water, pre-measured. 9 grams of powdered hexamine, pre-weighed. This is the perchloric acid made in a previous video, and I will be removing 5.2 milliliters when it's time. I'm adding the 76 milliliters of 99% isopropyl alcohol. Adding the 9 grams of hexamine. Adding the 11 milliliters of distilled water. And at this point, I'm going to start to heat it. We're going to try to get it to 40 degrees Celsius or until all the hexamine dissolves. I had to change the view here to get the thermometer in view. But um, you can see we're at 24.5 degrees Celsius. We're over halfway there. Another check here. And we are just above 40 degrees. We're at 41.3 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to level the temperature off here. It's almost all dissolved. There's a couple particles bouncing around on the bottom, but uh, that should dissolve quickly here. This is about three minutes later and everything has dissolved. So I'm going to stop it now and we'll just do a regular filtration. The hexamine solution here is dissolved, uh, but it is a little cloudy and that's why I'm doing this filtration just to take out any of those small particles that uh, might stay in there and affect our final product. Filtration is done, and because we now need to add the uh, perchloric acid, I'm going to put this back into this. But you can see how clear the solution is now. Time to add the perchloric acid here. I have a micropipette right here set to 5.2 milliliters. Honestly, without this, I wouldn't get it right, but this is what we're using. Adding the perchloric acid. 
and you immediately see the HDP come out of solution there. I'm going to continue to add this slowly. I'll be back. I'm almost done here, but the HDP is so thick in there that the uh, magnetic stir is barely doing anything. Just finishing this up. I did not use any heat in this uh, part of the process right here, but as you can see, that's some steam forming on the walls because this is very exothermic, which I already talked about, but yeah, it's pretty hot. I push some air in there, you can see this. Okay, I'm gonna let that run for just a minute or two, and then it's gonna be time to chill it. All right, moving our HDP here to chill it just to make sure we get all of it out of solution. I'm gonna leave it there for, I don't know, an hour maybe, max. It's been about 45 minutes and I can tell there's nothing more precipitating out of this. In fact, what has precipitated has just gone to the bottom of the speaker right here. So what I'm gonna do next here is go and vacuum filter this. I need a vacuum filter here. I have about 20 milliliters of the 99% isopropyl alcohol here so I can swish out that beaker near the end. Okay, that's good. It has stopped dripping. I now have some very cold acetone here that I'm going to wash it with briefly. Done. The acetone is done dripping through and or some of it evaporated probably. So we're done with this. And we're going to scrape it out here because there's acetone mainly in there now. This is probably going to dry really quick. Okay, we now have our final product of the HDP. I'll be back when it's completely dry. The HDP is done drying and I am going to now weigh it. I'm hoping for a yield somewhere around 10 or 11 grams. Um, I have not done this yet. I have no idea if this is going to even get in there properly. Looks like it now. Yeah, okay. Okay, so not quite 8.19 grams. That's about a 70% yield compared to theoretical, but you know, I'm happy with it. And uh, I'm gonna now test some of the properties. To start testing our HDP, I measured out one half of one gram. I'm gonna take that one half gram of the HDP that you can see in that small beaker. We just weighed that, put it in the metal cup there, put the uh, propane burner under it and leave it there until it either burns, ignites or just pops. Okay, that ends this experiment. It just burned, obviously. This is the inside of that cup, and you can see other than a tiny bit of black residue at the very bottom, it did completely burn up. That's one-tenth of one gram on a sticker, a round sticker, and I'm going to take another round sticker and stick it on top of it so I can hammer it and see if we can't get it to pop. All right, let's take it outside and see if we can't get this thing to go off with a hammer. Smash this sticker with the HDP in it. I'd say that's a negative test. That's just over a half a gram there out in the open and just lighting the fuse.
burns extremely quickly, of course. Just in experimenting, I took some of this copper sulfate and mixed it in with the HDP. I really have no idea what's going to happen, but just giving it a source of copper, I thought. Hmm. Didn't ignite. Look at that blue flame though. Wow. This is one gram of HDP in 0.25 grams of copper sulfate. Well, half smoke bomb, half flare, but those uh, flames, I don't know if it comes through, are violet, violet, purple, and blue. This one I mixed the HDP with just pure copper powder. Let's see what happens. A smoke bomb. Interesting. So the last thing I'm going to do... I took four tenths of a gram of the uh, HDP, put it in this uh, aluminum tube and crimped it. It's also crimped on the other side with the fuse just to see what happens, uh, whether it reacts to the aluminum or not is also of interest. Um, so I'll put, just set this on the ground and light it. Okay, so it's on a brick on the ground. All right, pretty neat, like a little flare.